That uh, solo that I played a minute ago is from an Alice Cooper song which features on this album, which is one of the greatest albums of all time. It's called Welcome to My Nightmare by Alice Cooper. I'm sure you all have it. And if you don't, you should. Um, this is the start, if, if you're not aware of the history of this, this is the start of the, 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 the gradual change occurred from like Pretty For You to Love It To Death to Killer with the guest appearance by Rick Derringer that I you know, talked about last week at length. School's Out, again with Rick Derringer. School's Out also with the addition of uh, Dick Wagner and Steve Hunter. Billion Dollar Babies with incredible twin lead solos. Um, Muscle of Love, which is really underrated. Muscle of Love is a great record. I mean, I, I, I completely forgot about it apart from Hello Hare and Teenage Lament. Pardon me. And then this came out and it's just, I don't know, it's just on a different level altogether. And I think that this album, Welcome to My Nightmare, will stand up. You know, forever from the first time. From the start, first time you hear that, and Alice sings Welcome to My Nightmare, I think you're going to like it. Anyway, that song I just played was called Escape. Um, and it, it comes near the end of the album as a little bit of light relief, because I'm sure you know it's a concept album. And I thought it'd be interesting to, to go through all the parts and escape. It, it runs on a riff that goes E, B, A, A, B, E. E, B, A, A, B, E. Right? So it sounds very simple. It's played like this. <laughs> That's, that's the riff that it runs on, and Alison's escape. Just get me out of here. Right? Now, there's also a bit of um, what I would term funk guitar. Um, and fun unusually, if you like, the, the chorus is the same as the verse. You know, the uh, put on my sad or happy face is the same backing as That's Why I Escape. Just get me out of here. Yeah. I mean, that bit's going on. There's a... Yeah. That kind of uh, octave funk guitar part, and it works brilliantly. And, and how that works, if you know, I'm sure you can think of a lot of songs that use that. What happens is, here's the, here's the octave over the E, but when you hit the A, we're playing the same note. So, you know, we're, we're, we're not going. We're just playing the one note, this one E. And, and I listen to it on headphones. Um, the closest I can get to it is, Into it. So that's like two. Then a, then a bit of chuck. Then two. Then, then two again. Bit of a chuck. And one. But you know, in the heat of battle, I would say just just play that with you know a bit of feel. So then we go back to the second verse, which is second verse, same as the first. They don't play that harmonic at the end, but you know, I kind of carry the way that. So it's the same sort of idea. Now it then goes into a bridge section. The bridge section is absolutely lovely. So it goes to G. Now, I don't know what sound you'd, you'd use for that. I like the G chord here. 
And what happens with the chords is Where am I running from? There's no place left to go That's the bridge. So we get G D G D Right? So you can play that any way you want. As I say, I like that one. get a huge build up any second now which is leading to Dick Wagner's solo. Now I don't know if 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 some some of us have a tendency to think well that sounds quite simple that sounds pretty easy you know if you can sing it you can play it and and you know in my experience these are always you know the hard ones the hardest ones to, to play you know ones where, where on the surface of it there's not a lot going on it's a simple melody or a simple theme, but it's played incredibly well. You know, like you know, when you hear Paul Kosov playing. You know, you think about the authority he's got, not with that much drive, but you think about the authority he's got playing that. So sometimes, you know, you hear Gary, obviously. Of us could sing that, but to play it with the authority that, that those two guys had um, is a different uh, kettle of bananas altogether. So, what I'm trying to get at is Dick Wagner's solo in the face of it sounds like it'd be you know quite easily. It's, it's based around uh, a, a, an E major lick coming off a C sharp minor position, you know, which I'm sure you know. <laughs> It's around there, play an octave up. Right, but we'll get to all this bit in a minute. Um, so the bridge goes G. This is a where am I running to? There's no place left to go. Second time it goes. When I go to the, the D, it goes to a B with a suspended note. So we've got this B with the E in the top. And that's the bridge. So then the C the band go back to. It sounds like he's playing the same lick four times, but uh, he's not, right? So the first thing you hear, you play in two positions, you can play off the G and the E string, which would be like... Right? Or you can play a... decide which position you want to play it in. It's, it's slightly easier if you like playing on the top two strings but you'll get a fatter sound playing it on the second and third strings. But the thing is the, the stress and the emphasis changes every time he plays that lick. So if you take it that's, that's the lick. That is different every time right. So the first time Make sure you go down to the C sharp and then have a brattle. Right? Play again and then C sharp B. And this, I mean, it's just a beautiful choice of notes. That's half the solo. Sick. 
second time is different. Now you can see what happens there. We're putting two notes against each other. A lot of blues guys do this sort of thing. We're bending the G and then we're bending the F sharp. So yeah. Like that. And it sounds really mean and nasty. Right? And we're back to the if you imagine in parts of four and four parts, that's part three. Right, here's part four. Right, so this time we don't go through C sharp and B. But we jump down to the E, so we're effectively playing the same like in two octaves. Same thing. And then one. Now, these last notes, uh, Phil Collin does one with Def Leppard in their version of Blondie's hanging around the telephone. Again, sounds simple, but sometimes these are the hardest thing to get right. It's a, it's a crazy vibrato that, that, that Dick puts on this last note, right? So I'll play really slowly. the whole solo. Now if you play it with a rock and roll sound, we'll get... solo um, escape and it's all the chords so we've got the opening not playing with that sound but you know what I mean and then the lovely bridge rip this lovely bridge from and I see something's gonna happen and the band kick into uh, Don't do that bit, but prepare the other. 